Well, hello, thank you for joining me today again on the Church History Trail. Um, where we are today is we're in the town of Oma in County Tyrone. And I'm going to take you and show you a building. And this building is Oma Orange Hall. Now, it was designed in 1869 in the Italian Gothic style by architect Fitzgibbon Locke of Die Stroke London Die. Now, Mr. Samuel McLean of Oma, he was the builder. And the front wall gable contains a plaque of King William III, the Prince of Orange, and also three other circular plaques. And I'm going to talk to you about them, but before I do, I want to mention uh, King William III, the Prince of Orange. And, of course, he was married to uh, Mary, and Mary was the daughter of King James the second and so William was Dutch and he was regarded as a Protestant champion in Europe and William and Mary were first cousins and they were married in 1677 so whenever the actions of James the second were seen as being to undermine the Protestant throne in England William was asked by establishment figures to challenge James for the throne and he successfully did this so William and Mary became the only joint monarchs in the United Kingdom in its long history and William reigned from 1689 to 1702 and then Mary reigned from 1689 to 1694 and just up the hill there is Oma Town Centre Um, just across the road there is the War Memorial for the Second World War. Now James II was the father, as I say, of William's wife Mary. He was the son of Charles I and he wanted to be able to control both Parliament and the army. And although a converted Roman Catholic, his actions were possibly motivated, at least in part, by the fact that his father had been executed at the time of the English Civil War. Nevertheless, Protestants viewed his actions with suspicion and feared a Roman Catholic takeover. And this is the Orange Hall here. This is the building here. And so I'm going to mention the, those wee circular uh, plaques and also the one at the top. But before I do, I'm going to show you the date stone. So, the birth of his son to James and his second wife, Mary of Modena, meant that the throne would not revert to uh, being Protestant. And so this was a catalyst for what is known as the Glorious Revolution. And so William was invited by English nobles to challenge James for the throne. And he prepared a large force. He landed at Brixham in Devon without any opposition, or at least with any real opposition, on the 5th of November 1688. Um, so this is the plaque here that I want to show you. As you can see it says Orange Hall, 1869. And as I say, William was invited over then by the English nobles. And so he prepared a large force and he landed at Brixham in Devon on the 5th of November, 1688. Now he was favored by a strong wind in the channel, which was later referred to as a Protestant wind. As he advanced towards London, many of James' supporters chained sides. So you can see the orange hall there. Now elections resulted in a new con uh, convention, Parliament, which determined that James had broken the contract between King and people and that the throne was now vacant. So the struggle went on and as James II landed in Ireland in an effort to reclaim the throne, the war in Ireland included f the famous events such as the siege of Die Stroke London Die, the longest siege in British history which lasted 105 days and also the Battle of the Boyne, fought in July 1690. 
And although the Battle of the Boyne did not end the war, it signalled its outcome. William was victorious and James actually fled the battlefield and sailed back to France, although the Jacobite army would continue to fight on till they surrendered at Limerick in 1691. So quite amazing. Now before I show you the the bust, I want to show you a, 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 a coin here, but it's it, it's not an original coin, it's actually a replica coin, which I got a few years ago in Schomburg House Museum. And so you can see the Battle of the Boyne there. That's William crossing the Boyne in 1690. But you can also see the replica coin there, which has got the bust of William on that side. And then if we turn it over, it has the bust of Mary on that side. And then you can see Mary and William as joint monarchs. So I'm going to show you this wee plaque here of William III. And it's the one at the top. As you can see. So that's King William III the Prince of Orange and then there's three other plaques here circular circulars with heads in them and I'm going to uh, mention these gentlemen to you so the first one here on the left this gentleman is Captain Mervyn Stewart and he was one of the Earls of Enniskillen I will keep the middle one for the last this other gentleman here who I want to show you. He was a member of Parliament. That's William Johnson, his squire. And then the one in the middle, beside the pole there, that's the Reverend Henry Cook. And of course, Henry Cook was a big unionist whenever Daniel O'Connor came over. It was, he challenged Daniel to a, a debate, which Daniel refused. And so the papers ran with the headline that the repealer has been repealed. And uh, not only was he big into unionism, but he was also big into the Presbyterian Church. And of course, there was a big crisis in the Presbyterian Church concerning Arianism. And he was the opponent of Dr. Henry Montgomery. And... Uh, so that was in the early part of the 19th century. And so Henry Cook was seen as a hero for unionism and also for Presbyterianism. So there you go, folks. I hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the history. And of course, Henry Cook was born on the 11th of May, 1788. And he died in 1868. So that was fantastic, wasn't it? This wee Orange Hall is fantastic for the history. So thanks for watching and God bless.